Lesson 7, homework from Module 4. Solve using a tape diagram. Number 1A. Okay, my tape is going to be divided into four parts. I'm taking one-fourth of 24, which means 24 divided by 4. One-fourth of that would be 6. Therefore, one-fourth is equal to 6. B, one-fourth of 48. Again, I'm splitting up into four sections because my denominator is 4. 48 divided by 4 is 12. Each of my units or parts is 12. One fourth of that will be 12. C, two thirds of 18. Breaking it up into three units, three parts. 18. Two thirds times 18 is the same as saying two-thirds of 18. If I took 18 and divided it into three parts, each part would get six. Two-thirds of that is equal to 12. Two-thirds of 18 is 12. D, two-sixths of 18. This time, instead of dividing my tape into three parts, I'm dividing it into six. Two-thirds times, uh, two-sixths times 18 is the same as two-sixths of 18. 18 divided into six parts is three. Two of those six parts is double one-sixth. Two-sixths is equal to six. Two-sixths of eighteen is six. Three-sevenths of forty-nine. Three-sevenths times forty-nine. I'm breaking my whole tape into seven parts. Forty-nine broken into seven parts is seven. Three of those parts is twenty-one. Three-sevenths of forty-nine is twenty-one. 120, 3 tenths of 120, broken into 10 pieces or 10 parts. Okay, it's going to be a little small, but we're going to do 12. 120 divided by 10 pieces is 12. 12, 12, we're going to do dot, dot, dot. 12. Each piece has 12 in it. 120. 10 times 12 is 120. If I took 3 tenths of that, 3 tenths. 3 times 12 is 36. 3 tenths of 120 is 36. 1 third of 31. Take 
1931, breaking it into three parts. I see that this is not going to be a basic fact, so I may need to do a quick standard algorithm. 31, broken into three parts. is 10 and one third. Let me just double check that very quickly to make sure it makes sense. My whole numbers, 10, 20, 30, plus my fraction, one third, two thirds, three thirds, 30 and three thirds is 31. One of those pieces is 10 and a third. That's one third, one third, 31 is 10 and one third. Two fifths of 20. Break my whole into five equal pieces. My whole is 20. Two fifths times 20 is the same as two fifths of 20. 20 broken into five pieces would be four in each piece. Two fifths of that is eight. Two fifths of twenty is eight. One fourth of twenty five. Break the whole into four parts. My denominator is 4. I have a standard algorithm with this. It's not a basic fact. 25 broken into 4 parts is 6, with 1 left over. Each part should be 6 and a fourth. Let's quickly double check that. The whole numbers. 6, 12, 18, 24, with my fractions, 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 24 and 4 fourths is my 25. I'm taking one of those parts. One of those parts is 6 and a fourth. 1 fourth of 25 is 6 and 1 fourth. Now, I already did my work fourths of 25 from letter I. Each part should be six and a fourth. Three of those parts this time, instead of one fourth, like in I, is going to be six, twelve, eighteen, and one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. 3 fourths of 25 is 18 and 3 fourths. Three fourths of a number is 27. So my whole is broken up into four parts. Three fourths of that number, three fourths of that number is 27. So if three of these make up 27, 27 divided by 3 would be 9 in each of those parts. Now I just fill in that last box with a 9 as well. So what number are we looking for? 36. 4 times 9 is 36. Now let's just make sure that makes sense. 3 fourths of 36 is 27. It's 3 fourths of 36, 27? Yes. What is the number? The number is 36. Two fifths of a number is 14. Breaking the whole into five equal pieces. Two of those fifths is 14. So if I have two parts that equal 14, 14 divided by 2 would be 7. 
So the rest of my parts are, or units are also seven. What is the number? The number is seven times five, which is 35. Let's double check to see if that's correct. Two fifths of 35. Two fifths of 35 is 14. 35. 